His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, deputized the BDF Commander in Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmad Al Khalifa, to visit the Royal Artillery, marking the 47th anniversary of its establishment, which was on the 10th of November 1976. Upon arrival, the BDF Commander in Chief was welcomed by the Defense Affairs Minister, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan al Naimi, the BDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagr al Naimi, the Royal Artillery Commander, Major General Sheikh Khalifa bin Hassan al Khalifa, and senior officers. The event began with the national anthem. The BDF Commander-in-Chief then inspected the Guard of Honor, whose members lined up to salute him. After that, verses from the Holy Quran were recited and then everyone recited Surah Al-Fatih for the souls of the nation's fallen servicemen. After a welcoming speech by the Royal Artillery Commander, Major General Jassim Zayed Al-Kbesi delivered a statement on behalf of the late servicemen's families. Then on behalf of His Majesty the King, the BDF Commander-in-Chief presented the fallen servicemen's families and the wounded with medals bestowed upon them by His Majesty the King. He also presented them with commemorative gifts. The servicemen who were injured during the aggression that had targeted them at a time of truce greeted the commander-in-chief who conferred on them the wound badge in appreciation of the courage and valor they had shown while performing their national duty. A commemorative gift was also presented to His Majesty the King by the Royal Artillery Commander. The BDF Commander-in-Chief conveyed the greetings and appreciation of His Majesty the King to all the affiliates of the Royal Artillery on the occasion of the establishment anniversary. Praising their honorable work and the great sacrifices they are marking along with their BDF brethren to safeguard the Kingdom's comprehensive development process and consolidate its multilateral partnerships. He affirmed His Majesty's pride in the efforts exerted by the Kingdom to undertake its historical defense role, hailing its high commitment and vigilant readiness in the face of risk and challenges, as reflected in its renewed defense vision based on developing manpower and weapons to ensure that the armed forces are provided with the latest expertise, science and skills to also always remain capable of carrying out their duties with competence and professionalism. He also affirmed His Majesty's praise and pride in the BDF's achievements, marking the anniversary of the Royal Artillery, conveying His Majesty's thanks and appreciation to the BDF command officers and personnel for their dedicated efforts in defending the nation and protecting its authentic values and fundamentals. He added that His Majesty the King called for more constructive work to maintain the national achievements, reiterating His Majesty the King's assertion that the BDF is the value of the Kingdom's security, stability and progress and that its ability to undertake its national duties under various circumstances is a source of pride for everyone. He also said that His Majesty the King had prayed to Allah the Almighty to rest the souls of the fallen servicemen in eternal peace and to bless those wounded with a speedy recovery. 
He also highlighted His Majesty the King's assertion that the sacrifices made by those who fell in line of duty will always remain engraved in the national memory. The BDF Commander-in-Chief also highlighted the constant royal interest in the Kingdom's late soldiers, citing His Majesty the King's affirmation that caring for the fallen servicemen's families and their affairs will always be at the top of their priorities, reflecting His Majesty's recognition of the state of the late servicemen who had sacrificed their lives for the sake of the homeland. Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed paid tribute to the late servicemen's families for their patience and fortitude, commending their courage showcased by the wounded while carrying out their sacred patriotic duties. He wished them a speedy recovery. He affirmed that uh, thanks to the sound directives of His Majesty the King and the close follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the BDF will continue playing its role in defending the homeland to the fullest, thanks to the patriotism and courage of its affiliates.
A telephone call was held between His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Vice President of the United States Kamala Harris. During the telephone call, regional and international issues as well as developments in the Gaza Strip were discussed. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of a ceasefire for a humanitarian truce, the protection of innocent civilians' lives and the release of hostages and detainees, and the necessity of opening urgent, unhindered humanitarian corridors to deliver aid and assistance into the Gaza Strip. His Royal Highness underscored the Kingdom of Bahrain's irrevocable rejection of the forced displacement of Palestinians in Gaza from their land. He underlined the importance of reinforcing unified efforts to prevent the escalation of the situation and halt a violence that threatens regional security and stability. His Royal Highness added that adherence to a just and comprehensive peace is the only option to protect and release the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people. The strong of the strategic Bahrain-U.S. partnership was also reviewed and the importance of furthering relations to achieve joint aspirations and goals was emphasized. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the Auditor General of the National Audit Office NAO, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, who presented His Royal Highness with the 20th NAO Annual Report 2022-2023 at Rifa'a Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the Kingdom's commitment to adopting and implementing plans and programs that ensure the effective and optimal management of public fields in line with the aspirations and visions of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He underlined the Kingdom's firm commitment to address all NAO's observations, implement measures to enhance oversight and accountability, and consolidate integrity, honesty, and professionalism across government work streams. His Royal Highness emphasized a Team Bahrain's commitment to performing their responsibilities professionally and efficiently and ensuring that public funds are managed according to national regulations. He noted NAO's dedication to their regulatory mandate, which is reflected in their reports issued annually. His Royal Highness commended the government agency's commitment to adopting the best practices across their administrative and financial procedures to ensure the optimal management of public funds. He stressed the importance for government agencies to review, analyze, and document all observations and ensure that the necessary legal measures are taken immediately. He stressed on the importance of government agencies' observation of non-compliance in their finances and administration to correct these observations and ensure that they are not repeated in future reports. For his part, Sheikh Ahmed highlighted that the NAO continues to develop thanks to the unwavering support of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness. He concluded by noting that the report included findings from various economic, social and service sectors, explaining that the fundamental observations and recommendations outlined within the report cover the team's findings for the 2022-2023 to year. The Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Ahmed bin Faisal Al Malki, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Ambassador of the United States to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Stephen Bondi, at Rifa'a Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the long-standing Bahrain-U.S. relations which have grown over the years through close strategic multi-sector collaboration and partnership. His Royal Highness noted the importance of building on existing bilateral cooperation and collaboration in line with mutual aspirations. He outlined the importance of international efforts to safeguard regional security and stability and support development in line with the aspirations of the people of the region and the world. Regional and international issues as well as developments in the Gaza Strip were discussed. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of a ceasefire for a humanitarian truce, the protection of innocent civilians' lives, the release of hostages and detainees, and the necessity of opening urgent, unhindered humanitarian corridors to deliver aid and assistance into the Gaza Strip. 
In this regard, His Royal Highness underlined the importance of reinforcing unified efforts to prevent the escalation of the situation and halt violence that threatens security and stability. His Royal Highness emphasized that a just and comprehensive peace is the only option to protect and release the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people. His Royal Highness concluded by highlighting the importance of furthering bilateral relations within the framework of historic relations and mutual agreements, including the recently signed Comprehensive Security Integration and Prosperity Agreement, which will further cooperation in security, military, advanced technology, trade and investment to benefit all. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 101 of 2023 appointing directors at the Supreme Council for Environment, SCE, based on a proposal by the President of the SCE. The edict stipulates that following uh, directors shall be appointed at the executive apparatus of the SCE. Sheikh Mishal bin Ibrahim bin Jabir Al Khalifa, Director of Al Arin Wildfire, Wildlife. Director Nov Ali Abdel Mahsin Al Wasmi, Director of Reserves Directorate. Amna Hamad Ali Al Ramehi, Director of the Communications and Environment Awareness Directorate. Maryam Mohammed Abdullah Al Ansari, Director of the Environmental Evaluation and Licensing Directorate. Lama Abbas Al Mahrouz, Director of the Environment Monitoring and Protection Directorate. And Ali Abdullah Ali Isa, Director of the Biodiversity Directorate. The Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, SCH Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, made an inspection visit to the Salmania Medical Complex, SMC, as part of their field follow up on its development projects. The Health Minister, Dr. Jalila Hassan, and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of Government Hospitals, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdul Aziz Al Khalifa, and CEO of Government Hospitals, Dr. Ahmed Al Ansari, were present. The SCH chairman was briefed on the developments of the new central laboratory project, which was developed and equipped with the latest devices and technologies, the first of its kind in the Arabian region. One of the most uh, prominent features of the central laboratory is its ability to complete more than 12,000 samples per hour, an increased rate of 69% over the current laboratory equipment. The storage capacity has also been increased by 50% of the current capacity and the new electronic system it contributes to the speed of receiving and analyzing samples in record time to serve SMC visitors and the private health institutions and hospitals. Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed reviewed a number of other development projects within the complex, which would strengthen the infrastructure of the health sector and develop the services provided according to the highest level. The Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Mohammed Al Kaabi, affirmed the importance of the Regional Development Forum for Arab States, which constitutes an opportunity to introduce the participants to Bahrain's achievements in this vital sectors and exchange points of view in light of the many topics that require coordination and discussion, including reducing the digital divide, cybersecurity, digital innovation, and digital transformation.
The Representatives Council held its weekly session, chaired by the first Deputy Speaker Abdin Nabi Salman. The Council approved a referring to a draft law on regulating the fishing, exploitation and protection of marine wealth to the Public Utilities and Environment Committee. The Council approved the Committee's recommendations on the final report of the Parliamentary Inquiry Committee on Food Security in Bahrain. The chairman of the Board of Trustees of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, participated in the Confluence of Conscience Conference organized by Muslim Council of Elders in the UAE. In his speech, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah affirmed the importance of unifying international efforts aimed at protecting the future of humanity, praising the UAE's effort to host the COP28, which supports the development of comprehensive climate change strategies and linking them to the Sustainable Development Goals. He said that Bahrain has succeeded in enhancing environmental equality and reducing the effects of global warming through building an integrated system linking environmental protection with achieving sustainable development goals. Dr. Sheikh Abdullah noted that the center seeks to invest in human values to achieve equitable coexistence within the environment as an essential demand supported by all religions. He called for raising awareness and enhancing capabilities within a responsible humanitarian partnership capable of applying modern technologies alongside religious values to achieve environmental recovery. The Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority participated in the World Travel Market held in London from November 6 to 8. More in this report. The World Travel Market brings together global tourism stakeholders to showcase new attractions and destination insights. Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority's participation in the World Travel Market provides an ideal opportunity for direct engagement with relevant stakeholders and promoting the latest development in the tourism and hospitality sector in Bahrain. Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority is keen to increase tourism investment and enhance its contribution to the GDP as per the set goals in the Tourism Strategy 2022-2026 launched as part of the Economic Recovery Plan. In the past few years, Bahrain has succeeded in establishing itself as one of the leading tourist destinations in the region through the provision of high-quality hospitality services and advanced infrastructure, as well as its accessibility through a wide network of international air routes. The National Civil Protection Platform launched by the Ministry of Interior represents a qualitative shift in the security awareness system that proceeds with a studied methodology and is considered a modern method that keeps pace within a modern technology that keeps a line of communication between citizens and concerned authorities. More in this report. The National Civil Protection Platform which was inaugurated by the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, comes to emphasize the role of security awareness and education in enhancing public safety among all citizens and residents. The Ministry of Interior has followed the sound scientific approach in preparing it. The platform's content and guidance in the fields of civil protection was launched based on the results of a national survey, which was conducted last year on a sample of Bahraini society, amounted to more than 13,000 people, with the aim of measuring the public's awareness on how to deal with emergency situations, and its results confirmed the importance of raising awareness of safety guidelines and procedures for dealing with emergency situations. The platform includes several topics, including public safety procedures and safety at home, work, school, and how to behave in the event of heavy rain, strong winds, and radioactive contamination. One of the most important features of the platform is that it is available to everyone and is updated on a daily basis amid the keenness of the platform's team to be interactive and include constant communication with the public to measure the response and then develop media and awareness messages in order to deal with emergency situations. Bahrain Airport company BAC made an inspection visit to the Express Cargo Village project located north of the Bahrain International Airport runway to review the progress of work and the latest developments in the construction work in the first phase. BAC CEO Mohammed Youssef El Binfilah confirmed that the first phase of the project is proceeding according to schedule, indicating that 44% of the first phase has been completed, which has an area of approximately 58,000 square meters, equivalent to 59% of the total area of the expressed cargo village. 
the village will contribute effectively to enhancing the capacity for larger flows and larger volumes of cargo at Bahrain International Airport in accordance with the highest international standards. The Ministry of Works announced that the tender for the fourth package project of the Northern Bahrain Road, which includes the construction of C18 Bridge, the fourth bridge between Manama and Muharraq, is as considered one of the strategic road network projects funded by the Saudi Fund for Development. The Ministry explained that the project work includes the construction of two bridges. The first is the sea bridge that will connect Asaya to Bahrain Financial Harbor. With the length of 482 meters and a width ranging from 56 to 64 meters, providing five uh, traffic lanes in each direction, in addition to a spare path for pedestrians and bicycles in each direction. The second is the construction of a one-way bridge with a length of 390 meters and a width of three traffic lanes to serve traffic coming from Essaya and Psetin heading to Al-Fatih Highway.